It'll still be a while before we get updates to the budget price below $300 range uh, for 2023. So it's looking like right now we've got the RTX 3050 around $280. If uh, we look at the AMD side of things, you can get the RX 6600 XT for around $260, or sometimes the 6650 XT, which is a few percent faster, comes in around the same price. Looks like that's what we're seeing right now. Uh, I don't have a 6650 XT, but just add a couple percent to my 6600 XT results and you'll get the basic idea because the 6650 XT is just an update with a little bit faster memory which helps performance by a few percent. Uh, the Intel side of things though is pretty interesting. I Intel has entered the discrete GPU market with the ARC A750 and 770 and the A750 especially has been priced very aggressively right at about $250 right now making it actually the cheapest option here although very close in price to AMD's competitor and still these guys these aren't incredibly cheap for a lot of people. Three $300 almost is a lot of money, so if you want to help recoup some of the cost of buying one of these, you should seriously consider selling your old hardware. Uh, you can uh, get your, the best price for your GPU at today's sponsor, Jawa.gg. Um, so if you're in the market to upgrade your video card, you should offset the cost by selling your old one. Now, Jawa.gg gives you two very interesting options. One option is to list the card for sale yourself um, and kind of manage everything yourself. That's more similar to doing something like eBay. However, unlike eBay, uh, you get to keep more of your money. They take uh, lower fees on their, their market sales. So that's a very good reason to consider Jawa.gg and they still have very good seller protections and they're also gamer friendly with their focus on PC gaming hardware uh, rather than being more general uh, like something like eBay. Now you could uh, actually just remove a lot of the hassle by just selling your GPU directly to Jawa. If you do that, uh, then you don't have to wait wait for a buyer. You just uh, tell them the GPU model and condition. They give you a price within 24 hours. Ship your GPU to Jawa, receive it, inspect it. Um, they pay you immediately. Uh, click the link in my description or pinned comment uh, to sell your GPU on Jawa.gg. You could also look at buying a used GPU there if these prices for new GPUs are still a little much. Uh, let's uh, jump into the benchmarks and I'll give you my final thoughts at the end. Tons of huge AAA franchises have committed to switching to Unreal Engine 5 for future future entries, so performance in this engine with features like the Lumen software-based lighting system, which can also be hardware accelerated, we'll test that out as well, although by HWRT off, I mean the hardware acceleration is currently turned off, uh, the Nanite system allowing not a lot of pop-in on Nanite-enabled objects in the game as you get closer, uh, there's virtual shadow maps, these are huge features, but it's also extremely demanding at the Epic settings. Now why am I testing in Fortnite? Because Fortnite is developed by Epic, who develops Unreal Engine, so this is the only big fully released game where we can test out all of these features in a fully released game. Here you can see the 6600 XT with a 52% lead over the 3050 and the A750 from Intel with a 28% lead over the 3050. How am I getting all of these to compare side to side? Um, I recorded a game and then the Fortnite has a built-in replay feature so you can do that. However, none of these GPUs are giving us 60 FPS and the uh, 3050 is actually falling below a 30 FPS average. So um, yeah, not amazing performance performance from any of them. So we'll definitely try turning down the settings a little bit as we go. Also, if you're looking at the frame rates here, as we drop down to the high settings, you can see they're all getting much better performance. Uh, if you're looking at the frame rate counters on each one, the one on the left is the current frame rate, the middle is the average for the duration of the benchmark run up to this point, and the one on the right is the 1% lows. Keep your eye on those 1% lows, but also keep your eye on the frame time graph to judge the smoothness. Especially on the A750, you'll see some spikes occurring that were noticeable stutters when I was running this that did not occur on the other GPUs. So definitely judge the smoothness by those frame time graphs. You can see it right here. Um, big stutters on that um, ARC A750. Now here we're seeing the 6600 XT with a 55% lead over the 3050 and the A750 with a 14% lead over the 3050. And only the 6600 is over not only 60 FPS, but actually averaging in the mid 70s. And even its 1% lows are over 60 FPS. So this testing so far seems to be a big lead for AMD's 6600 XT. Um, you can see some of the temperature differences and everything up there in the top uh, of the screen as well. 
Although keep in mind that depending on which cooler model of these cards you buy, uh, things like the temperatures and all of that uh, can come out differently. However, we know that Nvidia's big advantage is hardware accelerating ray tracing, right? So let's enable that. So this is the high settings, not the epic settings with the hardware RT on. And now we can see that AMD's lead has dropped to 40%. Um, uh, rather than being 50 to 55%. And the RK750 is staying at roughly the same lead over the 3050, although all of them now have a little bit worse performance. Now the uh, hardware-based ray tracing in this game is not particularly demanding. It just uh, helps the lumen lighting be a bit more accurate than in the um, software-based version. So they all lose a little bit of performance, um, but the AMD GPU is losing more performance um, from its original baseline than the other ones do, but it had such a massive lead in the first place that it's still winning here. You can see a bunch of frame time spikes again as well, except for on the AMD GPU and their worst on the ARC A750. So another thing to keep uh, your eye on here as well. Now, since um, with the uh, hardware RT on and at the high settings, we couldn't get a 60 FPS lock from the 3050. Um, and by turning on medium settings, it would turn off features like Lumen and Nanite and the virtualized shadows, which are the whole point of Unreal Engine 5. Uh, and again, we're not doing, doing realistic Fortnite settings. We're trying to test out the new Unreal Engine 5 features. So instead I've enabled upscaling. Uh, the Fortnite build has DLSS enabled. It does not have FSR2 or Intel's XCSS technology, although it does have temporal super resolution, which I've enabled to the same um, input frame, uh, input resolution at the quality setting as DLSS here. I do think DLSS looks a little bit crisper and cleaner, especially in motion. If you look like the arm swinging by on the character here, that kind of a thing, looks a little bit cleaner, although the performance here is now the 6600 XT leading by 35%. And the RK750 now basically in a tie with the 3050. Um, although again, keep your eye out for the little uh, frame time dips and all of that. Now, speaking of frame time dips, let's jump in to Cyberpunk 2077 and let's test out ray tracing. We're gonna test out ray tracing low, medium, and ultra here. So we can further investigate what's going on with um, the ray tracing performance. Cause wait, was AMD really winning by that much even with ray tracing enabled? Well, it's gonna depend on how demanding the ray tracing settings are that we enable. Also keep your eye on the frame time graph. Look at the ARC A750. Do you see those extra little like micro stuttery spikes in the frame time graph that the other GPUs aren't showing? By the way, the ray tracing low settings here are just local shadows, nothing else. There's no reflections, there's no lighting, uh, there's no sun shadows. And right there, the A750 just dips out. What happened there? It did, you, my monitor just displayed a black screen and this happened frequently during my testing of the A750. Keep in mind, I am running through a capture card, which might be a more unusual setup, but I did not see any of those issues on any of my AMD or Nvidia GPUs using exactly the same setup. Here, the AMD GPU is still winning by 39%. And it's the only one averaging 60 FPS with ray tracing enabled, which might surprise some people. However, if we turn on ray tracing to the medium setting, we see that AMD drops much, much further. Uh, the ray tracing medium settings in this game uh, keep the local shadows, but they also enable sun shadows and there's some ray traced lighting effects. Still no reflections and the lighting effects are only set to their medium setting. Uh, here we see the 6600 XT actually still ahead, but only slightly by 7% over the 3050. And the ARC A750 now has a 22% lead over the RTX 3050. This is the uh, first time I think we've seen it ahead of AMD's offering. However, none of them are doing well. I think this is a case where they're, uh, you know, the, the ray tracing load is now bringing the 3050 closer to the performance of the 6600 XT but they're all performing fairly badly with around 30 FPS. Now you could lock the game to 30 FPS, although at these settings, the 3050 is actually falling significantly below 30 FPS a lot of the time. And it's really only the A750 that is more frequently above 30 FPS um, at these settings. So there's your win for Intel if, if it doesn't disconnect from your monitor. Anyway, <laughs> um, if we move up to the ray tracing ultra setting, we finally see the RTX 3050 pull ahead of AMD's 6600 XT, although only by 10%. And Intel's ARC A750 actually pulls ahead of the RTX uh, 6600 XT by 30%. Although this is a case of, you know, uh, 
I don't know how you should describe it, but you're you're sinking the ship to beat your opponent. You see what I'm saying? Like like you're gonna kill your opponent by just by killing everybody, including yourself. It's a murder suicide. In other words, if you turn the ray tracing settings up so high that it finally brings the 3050 to better performance than the 6600 XT they all are performing badly, including the RTX 3050. So this is where I think, yes, NVIDIA has a hardware accelerated ray tracing advantage, but the 6600 has such a baseline lead in performance that enabling ray tracing at settings that actually bring them together or bring the 3050 ahead just brings none of them to a performance that you'd be happy with. Now you could try upscaling, which is what we're testing here. However, uh, my feelings on upscaling at 1080p is that I'd rather avoid it. It's just that your input resolution when you go below 1080p is low enough that I just don't think it looks very good. Um, however, that being said, I do think that DLSS does look better than FSR2, especially at these lower resolution upscales. I think there's a little bit less fizzling to it, that kind of a thing. Um, this game does not feature Intel's XCSS upscaling, but it does uh, have FSR2, which the ARK750 can take advantage of. So could the RTX 3050, but I do think DLSS looks a little better here, so let's give it that advantage. Now, using Ray Tracing Ultra with the upscaling, all the GPUs could play this excuse me, could play this at about 30 FPS, maybe pushing towards 40. They're all also basically tied, although the 6600 XT is the furthest behind. The 3050 is ahead by 5% and the RK750 is ahead by 8%. But again, I really just don't think it makes sense to enable ray tracing on GPUs of this class, because what we'll test out now is what if you just didn't enable ray tracing. Then you could play the game at a native 1080p, although what we're showing here is that only the 6600 XT can really even max the game out comfortably at 1080p Ultra. The A750 isn't too far behind, although it is definitely behind, and look at its frame time graph. Up and down, those little micro stutters all over the place. Um, so here we're seeing the 6600 XT with a 50% lead over the RTX 3050 and the ARC A750 with only a 12% lead over the RTX 3050 and with that, like I said, the frame time graph that's more all over the place. Now, um, again, uh, this is not saying that you have to play the game at ultra settings. So, well, I guess I'll say the 6600 XT out of these GPUs is the one that I think makes the most sense to just play 1080p ultra. It was also the one where you could kick on a little ray tracing at the low setting and still hold about 60 FPS. Um, if we run through this benchmark run one more time with reduced settings, let's see. Uh, how far down we'd have to go in order to get the RTX 3050 up to around 60 FPS. And we and I tested out high and it was just still below 60 uh, too much of the time. So I'm showing you here the 1080p medium settings. So I tested the RTX 3050 at 1080p medium and it was much more frequently above 60 FPS, although it still definitely does not hold the minimums at uh, at over 60 FPS. Uh, here, we, it's actually interesting that the ARC A750 didn't gain as much performance by going down to the medium settings as the other GPUs did. So it actually fell to only a 2% lead over the 3050. And once again, you'll see its frame time graph kind of a little more spiky at times than on the other GPUs. Whereas the 6600 XT has actually expanded its lead to a 54% lead over the RTX 3050. And it's now averaging over 100 FPS while the 3050 is averaging in the mid 60 FPS range with still dips below 60. The 1% lows on the ARC A750 are actually by far the worst uh, with 1% lows down around 39. So you're definitely getting a smoother experience on the 3050 than the 750 at those settings. Now let's move on to a different game. So Returnal is a PS5 exclusive game on console and after a couple of years now, it has come to PC only recently. This game is developed in Unreal Engine 4, and uh, it is uh, it is actually performing pretty well on all three of these GPUs. And you can actually see the ARC A750 much closer to the 6600 XT's performance in this title. We see the 6600 XT 51% ahead of the RTX 3050, and the ARC A750 43% ahead of the RTX 3050. Uh, which is one of its best showings we've seen so far, at least without ray tracing enabled. So pretty cool stuff there. 
Now, the thing is, while the RTX 3050 is absolutely playable at these settings, these are the epic settings. Now, this game does feature ray tracing, but we I, mean, I need this video to not be like five hours long, and I only had so much time to benchmark. So uh, I think we're done with our ray tracing benchmarking. We're just looking at the non-ray traced epic settings here. The 3050 was not able to average over 60 FPS. It was a little over 50. So while the other GPUs had performed so well, I didn't bother to, to try out lower settings at 1080p. The 3050 here delivers 67 FPS if you go down to the medium settings throughout that benchmark run, although the 1% lows are still definitely well below 60. So you can get a 60 FPS experience in that game if you turn down the settings. This is Atomic Heart, which is another game that just came out um, and is also developed in Unreal Engine 4. And in this game, the atomic preset is the highest preset. And we can see here that the 6600 XT is averaging about 60 FPS in this little opening sequence. The ARC A750 is actually taking a lead now with a 59% lead over the 3050 and the 6600 XT with a 46% lead over the 3050. The 3050 is the only GPU that is not over 60 FPS in this scene. It's actually averaging down in the mid 40s. So we would have to turn down settings uh, in order to get a 60 F FPS experience on the RTX 3050. Whereas the other two GPUs, you could be pretty comfortable just maxing the thing out. And again, Intel has a great showing here uh, with its 59% uh, lead over the RTX 3050, a lot higher than we usually expect. Now, as soon as our little uh, robot companion handing us a soda flies away, um, we'll look at turning down the graphics settings here a little bit to see how the RTX 3050 could do. Uh, in this test at the 1080p medium settings, I actually forgot to test the, uh, the ARC A750. So you can at least see the 3050 against the 6600 XT. Gets you a better chance to look at their power draw and things like that. Down at medium settings, the game still looks pretty good, although I feel like those characters in the background that do the dance moves are feel a little more like smeary or something. It's a little bit weird. Um, although the RTX 3050 is now averaging over 90 FPS and the 6600 XT is leading by 44% with over 134 FPS average, so looking very good here on both of them. You can also see the power draw. The 6600 XT does draw a little bit more power than the RTX 3050, although not by a lot. Although the, the, the way they report their power draws to this afterburner stats, um, I'm not sure is the equal between AMD and NVIDIA. I think NVIDIA includes um, more of the power off the board than AMD does. Anyway, Let's jump to Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 at the 1080p balance settings. I chose not to do this at the extreme settings because I think for a competitive multiplayer game, people are more likely to be turning down some graphic settings to get higher competitive frame rates for that competitive edge. Um, also, um, the GPU performance uh, difference between these is similar in the... Um, Battle Royale mode with Warzone 2. However, that's harder to benchmark, so I'm using the built-in benchmark on these games. The 6600 XT has a 69 nice percent lead over the RTX 3050. The ARC A750 has a 14 percent lead over the 3050, and yes, this is the AMD's biggest win so far, and that's normal here. Um, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 absolutely prefers AMD GPUs. Um, I've seen this in all of my testing. It's consistent. The AMD GPUs always overperform in this title relative to how they do in other games compared to their NVIDIA counterparts. It looks like it, the ARC GPU stays about the same relative um, to its competitors. Now, let's take a look at Plague Tale Requiem. This is a custom game engine but uh, from Asobo Studios. It's not Unreal, and you can see the frame time graph for the ARC A750 here looks terrible. So while the ARC A750 has one of its best average FPS performances here with a 63% lead over the 3050 and the 6600 XT with only a 43% lead over the 3050. I think the overall experience of playing the game would actually be worse on that GPU because of those weird frame time spikes that we're seeing. Also, I'll note that in this more demanding scene, now that you actually have the, pl the player has control of the camera here, none of these GPUs are actually over 60 FPS in the actual gameplay scene, and this isn't even the most demanding scene. So I tried turning down to medium, and unlike Atomic Heart, where going down to medium just has a massive boost to your frame rate, I've noticed that Plague Tale Requiem is not particularly scalable, and most of the scaling that you'll get is actually from resolution scaling rather than turning down graphics settings. 
Here we now still see those weird frame time issues on the A750, although it has a 58% lead over the RTX 3050. The 6600 XT has a 42% lead, and the 6600 XT is now averaging about 60 FPS in this scene, um, and then was over that during the actual cutscene. The 3050 is still well below 60 FPS uh, overall in Plague Tale, so you would have to use DLSS or something go down to low settings, maybe both. The Callisto Protocol is another recent game that pushes graphics um, really far. It's one of the best looking Unreal Engine 4 games. This is another Unreal Engine 4 title. And it looks like once again, Arc A750 likes Unreal Engine 4. It has a 61% lead over the RTX 3050. Once again, a little bit ahead of the 6600 XT, which is 51% over the RTX 3050. Here we're testing the 1080p ultra settings at the native resolution. This game does feature FSR2 upscale and no other technologies. Um, and this is the Ultra preset with no ray tracing enabled. You can enable ray tracing in this game, but once again, I, I think we're done with the ray tracing testing. Um, if we drop down to 1080p medium, we can now see the 3050 holding much closer to a 60 FPS average, although this corridor of death, as I call it, is, is rough. And we can see the Arc A750 just blanking out again. Again, it could be that I'm going through a capture card, but like I said, the, the, the GPU should read the capture card like just being a monitor. And my Intel, uh, sorry, my uh, AMD and Nvidia GPUs don't seem to have any issues with that. So um, overall, we can see also that at the medium settings, the RK750 no longer has the lead. It didn't scale as well by dropping settings, and now is 39% faster than the 3050, and the 6600 XT is 49% faster than the 3050. Let's get some final thoughts. I think the benchmarks when we're talking 3050 versus the AMD 6600 XT, and remember 6650 XT would be a few percent faster than that, really speak for themselves. AMD is offering by far better performance per dollar. It comes in at a lower cost cost with significantly higher performance, seeing a 50% lead or more was not uncommon, although sometimes less. What about NVIDIA's ray tracing lead? Well, we saw that while AMD lost a larger percentage of its performance every time you would kick up the ray tracing settings, that meant it had a lot of headroom over the 3050 before the 3050 would actually gain any sort of ray tracing advantage. And by the point we pushed ray tracing settings hard enough to give the 3050 a lead over the 6600 XT, both GPUs were performing so badly it was kind of irrelevant. So with that in mind, for just straight up gaming performance, the AMD 6600 XT is by far the winner here. Now, what about Intel? So Intel was, I think, offering better performance per dollar than the uh, NVIDIA GPU with the 3050, it was offering more, you know, a, a less consistent result. It could occasionally be faster than the 6600 XT, but it was a lot less consistent. So overall, I think that getting the, uh, the ARC A750 here is probably a mistake at this point. I'll also mention that it just feels worse to have in my PC. For example, every time I would reboot my PC, I'd be greeted by one of those little windows like allow this uh, art control panel software to make changes to your device, despite the fact that I already gave it permission last time, and it would have these little pop-ups in the bottom right-hand corner. And there's probably some way to get rid of that and silent it, but like none of the NVIDIA or AMD GPUs I have give me these annoying little pop-ups. Um, like I said, a lot of games we had weird frame time graph inconsistencies, and it could have been unique to my setup, but my A750 was disconnecting from my monitor slash uh, capture card randomly, intermittently throughout my testing. By the way, not just while playing games, sometimes we'll just on the desktop. Now, maybe you'll have a more compatible situation. My, you know, capture card situation is probably... Uh, less usual, but still, it's not an issue I was having on my AMD or NVIDIA hardware, any of them. Um, so that's a bit annoying. And so just in general, I don't... Th let me put it this way. So if you do want to consider going NVIDIA, it's probably because you don't care just about the performance per dollar. You're up there for the software features and the reputation for reliability of drivers, maybe productivity workloads and support. Um, because that is one thing I will mention, is a lot of productivity apps, uh, AI acceleration, things like that, um, do have better support for NVIDIA. 
Um, so that is something to consider. And then there's the reputation of the drivers, which is hard to quantify uh, specifically. So you need to kind of research that yourself. People have issues with both, although uh, there have been some issues recently um, <laughs> that I've done videos on. Anyway, the point is, if you're going for NVIDIA, it's not just for straight up performance per dollar, it's for the you know reputation of software support, driver stability, all of that. And you're willing to pay a, in, at this price point, massive premium and take a massive hit to gaming performance in order to do that. However, um, then if you look at the Intel versus AMD choice, it's like, okay, well, Intel has even less mature drivers and software support and all of that than AMD does because they've just had less time to develop that. Um, and yet the AMD GPU here costs about the same and actually in most situations was providing better performance. And like I said, I had fewer issues, all of that. So I've, in other words, the advantages that Intel has over NVIDIA are just the same kind of advantage AMD has, except AMD has a better price to performance ratio and fewer of the um, of the software concerns. So at this point, I really don't think I can recommend the ARC A750, despite it offering better performance per dollar than, than um, Nvidia does. I think it's not compelling over the 6600 or 6650 XT options at the similar price range. Uh, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section. And if you're interested in what about the 6600 non-XT? Uh, I've updated all of my GPU benchmarks in the low to mid-range uh, segment. So you're going to see a whole bunch of other direct head-to-head -head comparisons like this one. We'll see the 6600 non-XT against the 3050 at some point, maybe against the 750 as well, like we did here. Um, I've also tested out my 3060, 3060 Ti, the 6600 and, uh, you know, non-XT. I've got my 6700 XT from AMD, my 6800 non-XT. So tons more updated comparisons in the same gaming suite. Now, speaking of this gaming suite, that's the last thing I'll mention with the A750. I really gave Intel a softball here. I used all new games because I wanted to focus on new game performance in, uh, you know, in 2023. If you go back and play older games, Intel is going to have an even rougher experience than they had in this video. So honestly, I, my game selection uh, suite here happened to be a softball for Intel. Now I didn't, ex I didn't select it to be a softball for Intel. I selected it because I wanted to focus on brand new AAA games coming out in late 2022, early 2023. Um, uh, and it, that just happens to be a place where Intel has less of a disadvantage. And a reminder again, if you're going to be selling, uh, buying a new GPU, you should try selling your old one, jawajot.gg, link in the description and pinned comment. Uh, uh, check them out for one of these options. I hope all of you have an excellent day.